Well, here we are. Welcome to another episode of this old car with my 93 Nissan truck. It's been sitting for five years and I took off the air filter and air filter housing. And it's fairly corroded in here. Just from the moisture in the mouse. Oh, there's definitely mouse piss around here. The air filter didn't have any mouse crud in it, but if not there, nobody's home. I guess that's like a, what I'm going to refer to as a quieting box. Technically speaking, to make the intake quieter through that snorkel. So I'm going to pull that out because I got to get rid of this mouse smell first of all. I've sprayed it down with a bit of Greenworks. I actually hit the interior and there was some black mold going on. So I nailed that and I had to spray the interior with Febreze just because it was so disgusting. But it's a lot cleaner than it was before. It's getting there. Oh, I also found behind the rear seat Jeff. Jeff. I found Jeff's um, measuring tape. I also found some Sagrit money. They're clearly on the Sagrits. And I found a whole loop of elastic bands. I think they were roofers, because if I identify these correctly, these are small elastic bands that go around uh, roofing nail coils. And my experience through the great world of roofing is coming in handy. Well, if it was me, and it is, I'd pull off this valve cover to paint it with, I got some engine paint here. Where is it? Engine enamel. That would take two seconds to paint. It would look uh, a lot better. So uh, that would be nice. But uh, for right now, I'm just gonna lift the truck up and take a look underneath because I really haven't got under there yet because it's pretty low. So let's get it up. Well, there's quite the variety of smells going on in this engine bay in this shop right now. Um, sea foam, uh, I, I, I can't even describe the smell here, it's disgusting. Everything mixed with mouse piss and old gas. The old gas I could live with, the mouse piss, not a fan of. Let's, uh, let's take a little look under the truck, I'll show you what I found so far. So we're just going to roll under the old girl here, the creeper eye view. No, okay, I'm so not. Here's the creep. front of our oil pan, and it's not too terrible, I mean there's a little drip here on this center link but I think that's actually probably ATF off this cooler line right here by my thumb probably just needs a hose clamp and maybe cut the hose down notice there's a lot of little clips where this hose used to be mounted down you'll see that along here and there's nowhere to put them note to self always clean the floor before you use a creeper so really there's not even a, the dripping here isn't that bad I mean I would just drive this there's the uh, the cover on the transmission here is missing in action. That's okay, I'm not worried about that. But then we get weird. We start seeing weird things. Oh. We see this, uh, there's this cooler line. This is a transmission cooler line. And uh, these little tabs have nothing to bolt to. There's nowhere that this could possibly go. Unless these have slid off somewhere else, but generally they don't have anywhere to go. And then at the back of the transmission, things get really weird. See this wire hanging down here and just bare ends? That's a speedo drive cable. Uh, sorry, speedo drive uh, electrical uh, connection. But this truck, but this truck has a speedometer drive cable, including the threaded end. This has a newer transmission in it, indicated by this, uh, in the center of the shot here is the electronic speedo drive unit. I need a mechanical one so I can actually plug this into my dash. Because right now, because right now these wires are just hanging around. They are doing nothing. I don't know why somebody would install this. I might as well just disconnect this because there's no way I don't, well, there's no way I can disconnect that apparently, but there's just no way that that is compatible with this car. So, so what I need is to unthread this unit here and actually purchase a, the correct speedometer drive from Nissan. And I have a hookup, or I could buy used one online or at the wrecker. So, if I want the speedo to work, I need that. Looking further down the truck, you can see this is where those brake lines were. Uh, you know what? I'm on these. Yeah, these are brake lines. 
You can see how those brake lines were repaired. And then we've got a whole schmozzle, is the correct term, a few lines here. Nothing's dripping, nothing's leaking. Plan B, problem B, is that the, uh, the fuel, that's the fuel tank here. That's just a cover, the fuel tank's right behind there. Um, my fuel gauge doesn't work, so I also need to figure out what's going on with our fuel sending unit wiring. Oh, so that's just a little tour under the truck. The piss smell is just overwhelming. I need to open the door. I think I need to pressure wash this thing. I've, I've soaked the, the, uh, the throttle body in. Uh, actually, Jim, you'd be proud. I'm soaking things in deep creep. So I'm on, I've gone from the creeper to deep creep. This is good. Well, I just couldn't deal with the piss smell anymore. Uh, give her a little rinse with some fidget degreaser and some interior cleaner. Spotless. We can really get exhausted now. Actually, be ready to manifold. Yeah, gas gauge is still Dukakis. It's probably toast. Uh, temp gauge is coming up. I've got some good heat coming up. No issues there. Let's go for a rip. I don't think I want to drive this. The windows down or windows up. There's too many spiders in here. I find. We'll tell Susie, she doesn't like spiders. So I'm hoping it doesn't stall when I put it in reverse. I'm noticing it already wants to drop its idle speed when I put my foot on the brake. Telling me the booster might be leaking? Foot on the brake? By the way, my foot's going right to the floor. Okay, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake right now. She drops way down. Pump it up again and again and again. Eventually the pedal becomes sort of hard. And the idle comes back up. So I think my booster might be leaky, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's probably going to stall out here and put it in reverse. I'm going to have my foot ready on the gas. It still wants to stall. Oh no, we're good. Well, let's try and go for a cruise. Okay, we're rolling. I'm going to hit my foot on the brake. And it stalls. What is up with that? So why does my vehicle stall when I put it in gear? I cleaned the mass airflow sensor. It's on the side of the throttle body. It still might not be reading correctly. I thought this had a map system where it detects the intake manifold pressure. Sorry, I just got spiders. Spiders, spiders, spiders. Oh, your interior shot. Um, clean the MAF. The fuel is garbage in here, so that alone could be the problem. But it's idling well, and when I rev it, it's got power. So I guess maybe the next thing to confirm is whether it does it only in reverse or whether it's drive. And I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that already. I'm going to put it in neutral. Wait a minute. Here's the thought. I wonder if my booster is leaking because whenever I put it in gear, I also have my foot on the brake. All right, kids, now I got my bolt in the hole. I'll have no power brakes, but at least now hopefully I can see whether that's my stalling for a reason. I'm going to turn the heat down a bit. It's getting a little toasty in here. So right now, I'm going to try and put it in reverse again. This is with the, the vacuum line blocked. No, that's not the problem. Okay, let's go for a tour around the yard now. Uh, I'm going to have to use the gas to make it not stop. i to keep my foot on the gas and we're good. Oh, I'd love to do burnout. See, it's fine. I'm not foot's out on the brake now. As long as we're moving, we're fine. But as soon as that torque converter's uh, input, sorry, it's torque converter output has to stop or whatever, I don't know. It gets dicked. Well, after one lap around the yard, it's still wanting to stall. I'll try it again. You give her some gas, it's like using a clutch, so. You could probably drive it like this for a while and you'd be kind of, kind of, sort of okay. But uh, it's really not best. Oh, the yard, everyone, the yard. So I'm just going to do a little tour. Oh dear. Of 
course it's spinning your tire. much done for the day. This calls for a nice cold coke to Diane. And uh, I'm gonna have to do a little more googling on the old truck here to see exactly what I gotta do, what I shouldn't do. Now here's the thing. Let's say this thing's got a cock torque converter. Does it even have a lock-up clutch? It's a very good question. It's a 93, it probably does. Actually it's got a, a transmission out of a newer vehicle so who the heck knows? Um, is this truck worth it? I paid $300. I could load it full of scrap and dump it out. I could also buy a new air filter, oil filter, belts, fluids, trans filter. The brakes are sticking on the front calipers. The brake pedal is very spongy. The rears probably need adjustment. Maybe the shoes are worn out. You know, it's one of those things that's right now easy to be skeptical as to whether this project is worth it or not. So what do you think? Should I hold on to this old girl? Should we uh, put her up for sale for whatever? Should I? What should I do? I don't know. Wouldn't mind figuring it out and see exactly. If I could figure out the stalling problem, I'd have no problem fixing. I'd replace all the brakes, shoes, drums, pads, rotors, calipers, whatever. I'd have no problem replacing it if it was installing. So. If you have any ideas on these Nissan st stalling problems, uh, please comment below or p personal message me or uh, maybe send a smoke signal my way. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.